I'm Cindy Zimmerman, and I've been resident artist at the Desert Dairy for a few weeks. I have a project that includes an immersive installation and an exhibition of paintings. The paintings should really be talked about first because they led to the installation. They're called Unauthorized Version, and they're an alternative hagiography of Mary Magdalene, who I found out was often portrayed as furry. My version of her is even more, uh, shall we say, transgressive, and hopefully she'll give you a few laughs. Anna and Ted invited me to make an installation relating to these subjects at the icebox where the former dairy would keep the milk. And I really had an interesting time wrapping my mind around the context in which the installation would be made. I've had this idea for a grotto for a long time, and it's occurred in a lot of the titles of my paintings. I've hoarded objects that would go in this grotto for years, but I never had the right location to make something like this happen until I came to the Desert Dairy. The series of paintings tries to basically give you a narrative of the life of the Mary Magdalene that I've invented. And it follows many phases of her life, her struggles, her joys. This Mary Magdalene does not allow for a middleman between her and heaven. She finds her own way through life. She goes places where she hasn't been invited. She takes on roles that aren't reserved for her gender. Thinking about the dairy, I realized how close it aligned with my portrayal of Mary Magdalene because about lactation, you know, and that mammals have mammary glands and that Mary Magdalene, in my version, has given birth, has had the pleasures of motherhood. I started the work in here as a conventional studio and then I moved into the icebox to create the installation. This is the door to the workroom that turns into a white box gallery space. It was so convenient and wonderful for me to be able to be here getting things ready and then walk straight over here to the ice box and set everything up and be able to go back and forth all day long. This property was actually a dairy and I'm using the old ice box for the location of my installation. You can tell it was an ice box, just look at how thick the door is. This space is five foot two by seven foot nine. It's super small and it has only one source of light. But I'm used to working in tight spaces. I actually prefer it. My art likes to be crowded. Now in this case, I had in mind to create a place of a spiritual strength in a way, though I'm not like some kind of new age guru. There's something called syncretism in which you take what was given to you and you add your own. In this case, I wanted to make an altar that people could use. I've got many, many elements that you can interact with and a little guide as to how you might consider using them. For instance, you know, some people use a singing bowl, I use a ringing bell. There's a place for memorials some creosote for a beautiful fragrance. There's a light to show that the spirit's here, something for taste. One of my favorite things is that you can mist the air and cause the rain coming from the little pink clouds to uh, shimmer and move. Also, it keeps the atmospheric element of the original icebox in a place that gets really, really hot. In this corner, I have all the animals I could think of that lactate, including, of course, us. And I put them out as if they were kind of a bestiary, like in medieval times. Also thinking about kids, because I've been an educator for many years. This painting comes from a diagram I found in a textbook about dairy cows, and it's actually uh, the udder, one of the 
one of the sections of the udder. There are four sections. It has uh, lobes and ducts and two cisterns. I like it because it kind of looks like the tree in the Garden of Eden. Anna talked a lot about having things for people to do. And one idea I came up with is that they could write little intentions on these wooden tags and hang them on there. The nice thing about an interactive artwork is that people contribute. And the tough thing is sometimes they contribute something you don't want. And the nice thing about this one is you can like, remove the ones you don't want to keep. So I made a list of the things I was trying to do and tried to keep it in order. And I thought people might appreciate this list. So I made a little stack of these like they were holy cards that you'd find at the entrance of a church like the ones I grew up in. On the card is a list of things you might want to do at home to create your own sacred space. It's kind of like a how-to. Let me give you a couple of examples. First, you better sweep it, wash it, and measure it out. And then the next thing I would recommend is to transform the surfaces, the walls, the ceilings, the floor. Then you can go ahead and build the larger forms like the altar. Then here comes the part that I really like. You bring in the four elements, earth, air, fire, and water. You engage all the senses. You manifest your intention somewhere along the way. And then you can place the sacred objects sort of as the last physical thing. Then you get to create your own rituals and witness what comes about. So this installation is going to be here a while. And if you'd like to take advantage of it, I'd like you to come on out. And you can figure out your own sacred objects. They don't have to fit any kind of pre-existing uh, categories or criteria. I think it's nice when people want to memorialize a person, but not necessary at all. We have a place where you can commingle water and rocks from your own environment. And you can just kind of use it the way you want. You can participate in the elements I've brought, but it's really wide open. I really want this to be an artwork for use. And I want you to know that you don't have to have any spiritual inclinations or belief systems to enjoy it.